What's up guys? It's McMastodon. I am back in Terra Firmacraft and I have just created a fresh new survival world to do another walkthrough. Uh, in these walkthroughs, we take a look at just one aspect of Terra Firmacraft and see if we can't sort it out a little better and I try to give you guys some tips, something to get started. And in this one, we're going to look at the basics of survival, first day kind of stuff, beginners kind of stuff, basically food, water, and shelter. And you'll already notice if you're new to Terra Firmacraft, there are three bars above my hotbar. Uh, the red one is health, naturally. The green one is food or hunger and the blue one is thirst. You will note that I've already been going around and just left clicking on rocks and sticks to pick them up because you need as many as you can get in early stages. That was odd. But the first way to get sticks is to pick them up off the ground. You'll find them under trees and along the coast. And the second way is to hit the tree leaves and you'll see I just lost them all but you can also get saplings that way. There's a stick. You want just about as many as you can get in the first day. And you're going to be looking for, while you're picking up your rocks and sticks, you're going to be looking for food. You're going to be looking for fresh water. You're going to be looking for clay and trees. And I've already found the trees. And it looks like I've already got some food. I just want to talk about pumpkins. You can't eat pumpkins in Terra Firmacraft. You can craft them into seeds, but you can't you, you can't plant the seeds. But they are useful in that they are a block that won't fall down. In Terra Firmacraft, dirt and cobblestone both fall down. Uh, they're affected by gravity, but pumpkins are not affected by gravity. And you can craft them into jack-o'-lanterns for a light source, so that's good too. Uh, I want to get started on talking about tools. That's one of the first things you're going to have to do is to make stone tools. And for that, you need to bring up your napping grid. And by that, you need at least two rocks in your hop on a spot on your hotbar. Have it activated and right click. And that'll bring up the napping screen. First thing I always craft are knives. And you can get two by doing this T pattern down the middle. That gives you two knife blades. And then just put them in your crafting grid with some sticks and you'll have two knives and knives are very important very early on because if you hit the tall grass with a knife it gives you straw it gives you straw which is very important early on and I'll show you why and I've just found my first food source I'm gonna go ahead and hit these it's cabbage now I've gotten cabbage and I've got cabbage seeds Seeds will come in handy later. But I'm just going to grab all this cabbage right now. And you'll see they, they're all separate in my inventory. But if you put them in your crafting grid, you can combine them. So this is 32, about 30 ounces each. You, cabbage is really good early game because you get a lot. And I've already crafted that into a full stack, which is 160 ounces plus another two ounces. So I'll just go ahead and eat this one. And you can see my hunger go up just a little bit. You, you normally eat five ounces at a time. I'm going to continue exploring. Here's an ore. You'll find ores on the ground. That is tetrahedrite. That is a very important ore early on. So let me do another demonstration. I will craft this straw into thatch and I will place it here on the ground as a marker as to where I found the tetrahedrite. That is an ore for copper and copper is really the first metal you're going to work with. So I'm glad I found that. Here's some more tetrahedrite. I will put that there. So I'm go going to be looking for rocks, sticks, and thatch now. You can never have enough for the first night. Now I haven't found fresh water yet. Fresh water will have cattails in it and salt water will look like ocean biome and it will have seaweed in it. This all looks like salt water. 
have some more sticks, which is great. There's some cattails. This is fresh water. So until I have a drinking vessel, the way you drink is you just walk into the water and you'll notice that my thirst bar is going back up. Okay, let me show you two more tools you can craft early on. They are the shovel. It's just down the outside on both sides and just leave one in the middle on the bottom and an axe. And I usually do one on the left side and four out of the corners on the right side, leaving this kind of arrowhead sort of shape. That's an axe head. And again, you're going to put those into your crafting grid above sticks. And now you have those tools as well. The axe is used for cutting down trees. Uh, it's not like vanilla. You want to cut the bottom, the bottom log and the entire tree will fall down. It won't leave the leaves anymore. So if you need to harvest sticks or saplings, you need to get them before you cut it down. And there it goes. It takes a long time, especially with the stone tools. And your durability gets used up very quickly. It does take a while. And sometimes the nearby trees, I'm glad that happened this time, sometimes the nearby trees will fall down as well. It's sort of a chain reaction. So that comes in really handy. I've already gotten 31 logs. Okay, here I found another ore. And let's see what it is. I think I know. Bismuthonite. That is another very important ore early on in the game. Uh, it's a bismuth ore, and it's a way to make bismuth bronze, uh, which will be your second metal, the bronzes. And uh, the thing about the th the reason I'm marking this is because these ores are on the surface, and they're small. They're only worth 10 units, uh, but they mark the location of the larger vein, which is underground. There will be larger ores down below, somewhere down underground, and there will be a lot of them. And there's some cows here. Now, cows are not easy to kill without metal weapons, but in several shots I can do it. I'm not saying I necessarily recommend this early on. You may want to consider breeding them, especially if you find a male and a female. But for demonstration purposes, I want to show that they give a lot of meat. I mean, a lot of meat inventory filling levels of meat and also bones and a hide. I should get a large hide. It's down here. Yeah. So I got five bones and a large raw hide. A large hide is very good early game. So if you find cows, that's very good. And I will show you guys that in a little bit. This looks to be clay. Uh, I don't know if you can see that pattern, the, the zebra stripes. It is clay. Oh, it's very slow to. It's very slow to mine underwater, and it's more evident when it's above ground because you will see a special goldenrod flowers, and that is an automatic indicator that there's clay underneath. They only grow on clay. This looks to be a grain of some kind barley seeds. When you first start out, the grains tend to not be mature, although this one was. So I have barley. I can't really eat that yet. I also can't eat my raw beef. You have to wait to cook it. And I'll show you guys that in a minute. This is a very good seed, by the way. I will put this seed in the description because this is a very good seed for starting out. It has just about everything you need early game, I think long as I can find some good clay. This is a river. It looks like it's going to be fresh water. And my water's going back up. This is really good, guys. This is really good, guys. So the things I've been looking for is food, fresh water, and I think I see clay. It is clay. These are the golden rods I was talking about. Just grab one to demonstrate. Goldenrod. And this is a great setup too with the clay because there are two ways to set up your first shelter to survive the first night. You often want to do it along the water because there's some things you can do with the water at night including gold panning. Uh, 
but if you combine your your straw into a four by or two by two, you can make thatch, and that is a really cheap and quick material that doesn't that isn't affected by gravity. So I can make a nice shelter here along the water. But even better, if I use my shovel, clay isn't affected by gravity either. So I can just dig into this hillside. And I have a super quick shelter. With logs, you can right click and place a log. And that won't be affected by gravity, but it's a little expensive in that it takes a whole log to make a block. And if you build a little shelter out of it, it's going to take a really long time to bring it back down again. Good news about logs is if you shift right click, you make a log pile. And then if you right click on it, you'll see it's a two by two inventory and you can fill it with up to 16 logs. Once it's full, you can now shift right click on top of it and put another one on top, but it has to be full of 16 logs in order to do so. So that's a way to store your logs. You can also just right click on them with the logs until it's full. I tend to not like to do that because if you keep right clicking then you end up placing if you keep right clicking after it's at 16, the 17th one will just be placed as a log right in front and then you have to cut it down. Uh, it's almost nighttime, so it's good that I've already started a shelter. I'm just going to get inside. Make sure I'm protected up above with thatch. Now the dirt is falling down, because as I said before, dirt is affected by gravity, but that last block didn't fall, and that's because it's a grass block. It won't fall by itself, but if I come over here and jump on it, is it this one? This one? It has a chance of falling, and there it goes. And as it turns out, this is fresh water just outside my shelter, so my thirst bar is going up. As I eat, my hunger bar is going back up. Okay, so I have food. I have access to water. I have the makings of a shelter. I have enough thatch to finish it. Let me show you guys how to make fire. To make a fire starter, it's two sticks diagonally. And then you want to throw three sticks into one block, a single block, the same block, three sticks, and without picking them back up again, right click with the fire starter. It may take a few tries, but eventually you'll have a fire pit. And then right click it to bring open the, its user interface, put a log or two inside, it will start to heat up, it will start to give off light. If you put a stick in it, after a few seconds, you will get two torches. And if you put raw meat in it, as that heats up, it's now hot. Now it is now very hot. And it's cooked. Now I can eat that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Seems to be getting kind of laggy. Now, as you can see already, inventory is a bit of a problem for me. So there is a solution for that. With at least five clay, right click on it, it brings up napping screen again. If you just take out the corners, you get what's called a clay vessel. Now that is yet unfired, and we're going to have to fire that. So I'm just going to take a one by one pit, and I'm going to shift right click the clay vessel down in there. We're going to make this into a pit kiln to fire it. I'm 
going to right click on another one, make a few of these because they will become a rudimentary storage device. And the other clay object you want to make right away is a water jug or a clay jug. And that to do one, and then you do four like this, you three in this corner and cut out the handle, and that's the clay jug. So I'll put that in my pit kiln. You can put up to four items in there. I'm going to do, do another vessel. And just shift right click. And then I need straw. And you right click eight straw, and it will stop when it's eight. You can't overfill it. And you'll need eight logs. And my fire has gone out. It doesn't last that long unless you keep adding logs to it. It's eight logs. And fire starter again. And light it. Sometimes you'll run, your fire starter will run out. As you can see, I have no durability left on my fire starter. I think the next click is going to go out. And that takes just about overnight to finish. So I think by morning it should be just about done. If I take a log and a knife in my inventory, I get four bowls. I put the bowl back in the inventory, you get gold pan. That is a way to collect ores to f make your first metal tools. I did a full walkthrough on that to get metal tools. Uh, using gold panning and searching for ores in another video, which I will link to. And while we're waiting for the pit kiln, there's just a couple more things to show you guys. I certainly don't need that golden rod right now. One of them is food decay. Uh, you see how my cabbage has 0.3% decay. Your food will decay over time and it's an accelerating rate so the more decay on the item the faster it decays so if you put the decayed food in your crafting grid with a knife you can cut off the decay that will refresh it back to zero decay but you'll lose a little bit of the a little bit of the food uh, the other thing you can do with decaying food is you can eat it off which is disgusting but it works so if I eat that meat, the decay is gone. And I actually consumed it. Uh, but as the decay builds up on your food, sometimes cutting it off is the only option. The other thing you can do with food, if you click with on a solid surface with a knife and a bowl, you'll get a food preparation GUI. And if you add, you can add a vegetable, a meat. Uh, there's also fruit and grain. I don't think this grain will work. I can't add the grain. But you can add up to four items. The two four ounce slots can be the same type of food, but you can put meat, fruit, and grain, and vegetables in any combination as long as if you have two of the same thing, they're both in four ounces. And so if I do this and hit create, I'll get food. This meal is terrible. Uh, the saturation you get, the quality of the meal is dependent on a couple things. One is the ingredients you use. One is randomized for your particular seed. And another is your cooking skill. And my cooking skill right now is one because I've only made one meal. So it's fairly unlikely to be anything but terrible at this point. Although I could use different ingredients and maybe get a different result. It could be slightly better. But my fire has gone out. So now if I shift right click with an open hand, I can grab one of these. And if I right click on it, I see it has the ability to store. And you can put up to four things in there. You can't put large things like logs. I don't think a large hide will work in there either. But you could put small things like ore and especially food and then you could shift right click somewhere and place it down. The clay pots will 
reduce the effects of decay somewhat, so it slows decay. Uh, another factor affecting decay is temperature of the environment. If I do F3, I can see that it is 30 degrees out. That's very warm. That's uh, Celsius. So decay should be pretty quick. It's summertime right now. Also, different foods decay at different rates. So meat decays very fast, whereas raw grain decays much slower. Uh, and also, if you left click to break it, they will pop off, but you have to go down and get them. It will take thatch. It will definitely take food. And it will take seeds. So getting things out of your inventory early on is good. And getting your food in a cool, dark place, uh, such as a cave like this, you probably won't watch, want torch lights around them because that's just going to accelerate the decay. But getting them in pots in a cool, dark place is a good idea right away especially in the summertime. But it starts to lessen the effects of your inventory. And I should have my water drinking vessel. Excellent. You'll want to go to the fresh water and right click. Huh. So that's salt water and this is fresh water. It's kind of hard to tell the difference. But you right click on the fresh water and it fills the jug and then it's instant thirst quenching and you can carry it around with you. So you don't always have to be within sight of water. A balanced diet is important in Terra Firma Craft. These meters show your hunger level of the various food groups. So I've been eating vegetables and protein, so those are up, but grain and fruit are dropping. If these aren't full, your maximum health will not be full. So right now, my maximum health is 758. If I don't eat those, if I don't get any fruit or grain anytime soon, that will go down. So with the grains, if you put in a crafting grid with a knife, you can sheath it into the grain, and that can be fed to animals, and it can be used to, to lure animals. But until you can make a bucket, you won't be able to make it into bread. You can eat maize, which is like corn, ears of corn. You can eat that raw. And you can eat the grain, but it's, it's not as healthy as eating uh, bread, which is what you'll be able to do when you have a bucket. The only other thing I think I need to show you guys for very early on in the game, in terms of food, water, shelter, those kinds of survival items is the hide bed. This will not let you sleep through the night, but if you put two thatch down and right click it with a large hide, the kind you get from a cow, not from a pig or a deer, but from a cow, it will turn into a hide bed. And at nighttime you can right click on that and it won't let you sleep through the night but it will reset your spawn so once you have a shelter if you were to die you would respawn back at your back at your bed which is very convenient so you're going to be spending nights and you may have to deal with mobs I have another video that I'll link to that talks about how to deal with mobs before you've reached the metal age and working with stone tools and weapons but you guys should be fairly equipped for basic survival at this point. So, the thing to do is explore. Explore during the daytime. Run and hide at nighttime. You want your rocks, your sticks. Maybe find more clay. Maybe find more food sources. And look for those ores on the surface. 
So that's it for today, guys. Thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you liked it, and if you did, please click that like button. I will be doing more of these walkthroughs, so if you'd like to subscribe, please go ahead and do so. Uh, but for now, I'm McMastodon. This is TerraformerCraft. This is my little hidey hole shelter. And I'm out. Not that there's anything I can do with you today, but let's see if you have any friends. Do you... Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, I think the thing to do here is to just edit this part out. <laughs>